Oh, oh yeah, what is up, Colorado Adventure family? Today, we're gonna do something that a lot of you all could do on a lot of the different e-bikes that you have. But in particular, we're gonna do it on the Rave Bullet XV2 today. We're gonna to add a second battery on here. We're gonna put a dual battery system on the Rave Bullet XV2 today. We're gonna to add another 13 amp hour battery to give it a total of 26 amp hours for this 48 volt system. So it's gonna be really cool to just show you all basically how to do a simple dual battery system. And we're gonna incorporate the blender, how to attach both batteries to the blender, and as well as into the rear motor so we could get the power from both batteries and how that actually works too. I'll explain that as well, so hold on and listen. And we'll just go ahead and just do the simple way to attach it using the Rave Bullet X V2 today. And a lot of the bikes are very simple. It uses the very common simple battery system that a lot of the e-bikes use. So hopefully this tutorial will show you an easy and also more importantly, a safe way to do this dual battery system setup. And what that is gonna help do is help ease anxiety range uh, a lot of people, we use these batteries, and a lot of these batteries, even the 13 hour amp hour battery system, comes with more than enough that you need just to travel around town and stuff. But if you're like me, you live in the Colorado Rockies, you want something big and bulky, like we added the 60 volt, 60 amp hour battery to the GOAT, Power GOAT V3. And then like even on the Aventon Adventure over here, just a big battery system to get you back and forth. Even that's like a cargo, kind of a commuter bike. You still get a little bit of that range anxiety, even with the size battery that it comes with. We're gonna add a second battery here to add 26 amp hours of battery to a 48 volt system, which should give you at least in that 30, 35 mile hour range. So let's go ahead and dive on in and I'm gonna show you a simple and easy way. And of course, most of all, a safe way to attach that second dual battery system to your e-bike. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below and please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you're liking this video let's go okay so we ordered a second battery from rave another 13 amp hour battery super easy just went online ordered it super super simple process as always with rave and all their e-bikes and stuff i'll leave a uh, a link and a coupon code below for anything on rave and you'll get a discount on it including their bikes and their accessories oh but check it out there's the basic battery got the keys hold on to these keys whatever you do when you get these batteries hold on to these keys put them up somewhere both of them up somewhere you're not going to really ever take your battery on and off one thing i do like about these rave batteries is the usb port so you can take these batteries off and take them camping or whatever with you or if you're going on a nice with this dual battery system you could actually go on a camping adventure with a backpack and that'd give you power to uh, light up your lights or your phone, charge your phone, or even hook up a laptop too. So that's super, super cool. Some decals, just to match the decals on the original battery. We can put those on if we want. That's super cool. And it looks like what we have here is the battery blender. Now this is super important. What the blender does, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, what this blender does is if one battery has a higher charge than the other, it will draw from the higher charge battery first. And then it will equal out the charge between both batteries, then draw equally. So that's kind of sort of in layman's terms, rich dummy terms, how that works. This is gonna hook up to your main system. This is gonna to go to your controller. It's gonna run directly to your motor, your drive. And these two are gonna be the two that are gonna hook onto each one of the batteries. So I'm gonna show you how to basically just take everything apart, hook the blender up, hook the second battery up, do it safely and get more range. One of the first things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna unlock the base plate from the battery. And we're gonna leave that here because we need to mount that. But we're gonna go ahead and throw the battery 
on the charger, and I'm gonna show you how to do that safely too, while we're hooking this up so we can have a full charge when we're done. So first off, just have a, a nice safe place to, to put your battery, of course. You wanna make sure the battery is on the on position. We can take those keys, we'll leave that there. And we'll open up the, the socket area for the charger. Now what I like to do, and this is probably overkill, is I like to plug in the battery first and then plug it into the extension cord or socket. Now what that does, it just gives me a little bit safer assurance and no spark, no voltage. But it is super, super important that you make sure your battery's on before you charge it. Otherwise, your battery may not even charge. All right, now that we got the battery unpackaged, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook up the battery blender, then the mounting bracket, and then we'll hook up the battery and we'll see what happens. But first, I wanna go over a couple safety precautions. All right, boys and girls. First thing that I recommend that we do is we turn off the battery. And again, it's just like, you know, on the on position when you charge it, you're riding it. We're just gonna turn it into the off position. At this point, what I like to do is I like to come up on here and go ahead and just turn it on for a second. We're gonna get a little flicker before it turns off. As you can see there, the control turned on. The reason for that is, like I explained in, uh, the power goat v3 when i put in the 60 volt 60 amp battery in that you just want to discharge any kind of current or electricity that's going to be stored in your controller because it does harness and store electricity even after you turn the battery off so it's super super important to discharge that battery from any current or electricity before working on your bike or touching any electrical parts unless you want to shock yourself uh. All right, so like if you have any foam left over from shipping one of your e-bikes or whatever, it's a good idea to actually hold on to some of that foam for a lot of reasons. But one of them is definitely when you work on your bike and you want to flip it upside down. Make sure your controls or components are fold, folded down so when you do this, you won't wreak havoc. And what I do is I just bring up my back tire to about here, put on the rear brake, and just lift up super simple now if you got like mud guards or mud flaps on the back right there you really really want to make sure that those are either taken off or you're just paying attention so you don't break those and just any kind of like softer fragile areas make sure it hits the pat you could use a doormat you could even use a local yogi's yogi mat but you might make them mad and even under the handlebars here, I like sticking a little bit of foam too, just to keep it a little safeguard. All right, so the first thing that we have to do here, and this is just specifically on the Rave bikes, or even more specifically on the Rave Bullet X V2, there's just gonna be some screws that we're gonna have to take off. And there are gonna be one, two, three, four. And then you'll have a little tab here and you want to pop out. There's like a little tab here. There's a little area here. You'll take your Allen wrench. It's hooked in there. And you see, it just pops that right off. Huh. Perfect. After you do that, it pops right off and you're gonna see the controller is gonna be stuck to the bottom here. So we're gonna unscrew that. So this is mounted a little bit differently than the original. And it looks like, I wanna see what kind of controller we got here too. But this is actually mounted really securely. The original version of the Bullet X, that thing was just kind of flopping around. It's really cool to see that they've mounted that in there. And this controller is definitely chunkier. Let's see what kind of controller we're looking at here. Controller we're looking at 30 amp controller on this 48 volt e-bike that's super impressive that explains the that explains the torque that's super impressive that's good to know this feels like a very nice quality blender actually it's one of the better blenders that I've seen on the market to be honest with you so we're gonna basically hook the only 
one that will hook up to the controller. It's this one right here. It will be the male. We're going to hook up the male to the female part of the controller. And then they're going to have two baby batteries, basically. So there's that. So we're going to go ahead and take one of these females and take the male battery and to plug it in. Boom, we got the battery turned off, the current's off, there's no charge, there was no spark. Super, super safe. We're gonna now make sure that this is gonna be accessible to the second battery when we mount the second battery onto the bar bracket right down here. And I always think the best way to do the bracket is the base of the bracket always needs to be on the downward slope. We're upside down, so it'd be the upward slope right now. <laughs> but we just wanna make sure it's the downward slope when we're mounting it on. And we wanna make sure that we get at least these connected. It don't matter if it's here, 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 but we want to at least get two in there. It looks like we got three, so we'll get, be able to get all three of them connected. So this uh, second battery kit by Rave here, it does come with a uh, an Allen wrench with a Phillips head, so we would have been able to remove uh, the controller out of the, the controller box too, but it also has an Allen wrench for these screws. All right. And since it has it, we'll just go ahead and use it. And right here, just make sure you have enough base, enough clearance to put the battery up and then down. So we might let's go ahead and move that more in the down position for this one, just so we have plenty of clearance for the top of the battery to go on and to safely slide it this way. Because if we have this bracket too far up, we won't be able to put the battery up to slide it on safely and securely because with any kind of e-bike battery, you want to be sure that those things catch into these little notches and slide down into the contact points. And I think also by having that base down lower too, you'll also, depending on you know what company you go with, these cords like the, the battery cord itself that's going to connect to the blender, then to the controller, that you'll have plenty of length because I have done dual battery systems and had to get an extension. and. I mean, it works, it's just, you know, you want to minimize length of like brake lines and electrical cords. You just want to minimize it because the efficiency drops tremendously on the length, especially like with hydraulic brakes. The longer the hydraulic brake cord, the less efficient it is. So if you get like an upgraded brake, line or brake set and the brake line is super long it's not really advantageous to roll it up and stick it under your headlight or behind your headlight or whatever it one it looks very sloppy you know it's there you know it's sloppy and it's super inefficient you know let's try to minimize any length of a water hose any length of electrical cord just try to minimize it and don't torque these down until insanity just get them super tight because you don't want to snap those so boom now we got a bracket mounted and we're going to go ahead and connect these two just see what kind of length that we're working with and what this back bracket looks like and see if we have to make any modifications to it all right so male to female bam connected all right so there we got the controller mounted back in i'm going to take off the Sticky, sticky here. Put the camera up more at that angle. Yeah, it's pretty tacky. So let's go ahead and find a good place for it. Where it can be snug. There's a bug in a rug. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck these wires in just as much as possible just to get them all out of the way. A little wire tucking. A little wire tucking, boys and girls. A little wire tucking. That's all. And just get it to where you can get your wires and everything nice and snug. That way, we can pop it back in. And bam, back on. Sure, his cords are out the holes. Good. Boom. Done. You know, a lot of these manufacturers do make it, you know, pretty simple. But, you know, don't be surprised or shocked if you do have to do like a couple 
of strange modifications. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the bike back over. We're gonna make it look nice and neat. Then we're gonna attach the battery and see what happens. All right, and again, carefully lift up, get your back brake going, and walk to the side is probably your safest bet, and just easily lower it down. I'm gonna back this baby up, and I'm gonna show you how to zip tie the wires. All right, first off, you can never have enough of these zip ties, and especially if you're in the e-biking world, you cannot have enough of these zip ties. So let's go ahead and make it look nice and neat. And having like these little notches right here is like actually super nice because it keeps them from sliding down. And you could still attach a water bottle there too, just so you know. It is so nice out today. It's always nice here. It's freaking Colorado. It is on the super old, ultra gorgeous side of things today. <laughs> and it looks like we got this other wire here. We'll go ahead and actually right here will be the best way to, to do that. Get both of those tucked in there. And I'll do one more. All right, when you're done with that, Get your snips out and just snip off any of the excess from these little zip ties if you want. This makes it look neater. All right, boom. And there's that. Well, that just took a few minutes. Probably didn't have actually enough time to charge the, the battery all the way. That's okay. Huh. Just gonna turn the battery off for right now. And I'll unlock the, the battery from the unlock position. All right, and just make sure like in these grooves, you line up in these grooves in here too. So it's not just locking the battery, it's actually lining up in those grooves where it fits perfectly. And just check it, double check it, triple check it. Both of them, triple check them. But it looks like that lined up perfectly, so it looks like we got a dual battery system. Just little bikers over there. Check them out. What's up, guys? Yeah. This is a huge biking community, and I think the actual um, teacher over there actually rides an e-bike. See, there's the, check out the teacher on the e bike. Is that not a cool stuff? <laughs> that is super cool. <laughs> oh man, freaking love it. Anyways, all right, so hey, do we want to go this way with the stickers? Do you want to go this way with the stickers? I think I'm gonna go that way and just press these down really good, I guess. Every bike's probably going to be a little different, so. And then peel off nice and low so you don't pull them off. And bam, look at that. Looking good. Woo! Check that out. Looking good. Woo! Installation complete, man. And that just looks really good. I'm glad I put the decals that way. It just looks like they're going there instead of all over the place, which is if you got clawed by some kind of raptor or whatever that is, it'd definitely explain it. So here's the true test. We're gonna turn on battery one. And then turn on this battery. Bam. So both batteries are on. Here's the true test, boys and girls. We got power. We got power. Uh, uh, uh. How about that? Power and probably range for days. Oh me, oh my. What a day. I hope you enjoyed that. Whether you've got just a cruising around town, whether you've got your long distance bike, whether you've got your basically your utility going grocery shopping bike or commuter bike or whatever electrical vehicle you use range anxiety is real and you can see here we've got 26 amp hours here 
60 amp hours here. I think this may be, if not the largest manufactured e-bike battery ever made. And I own one, so there's that. Anyways, check them out, boys and girls. Whatever your ride, whatever you choose to do, whatever distance you have, it's always better to have more than not enough. <laughs> Subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments about adding a second battery, whether it's to the Rave, whether adding the big battery pack to a goat bike or whatever e-bike you have, don't hesitate to leave a comment, ask me any questions. I love answering questions. It's what I do. Anyways, I appreciate your love and support. I'll leave links below to Rave. I'll leave links below to Goat Power Bikes. And my secret announcement, and I hope you held on, I chose a bike. I went with Ghost Cat. I got a Ghost Cat F3. Now the next surprise is what color did I get? Stay tuned for what color we'll be doing the unboxing later this week. But first we got a range test to do on this thing. We have a range test to do on this thing. <laughs> and a lot more fun things to come. It's gonna be an exciting winter. We've got snowboards, but we also got e-bikes coming as well and different things to do with those because as you know, I ride year round. Until our next adventure, this is Chris from the Colorado Adventure Channel right here between Beaver Creek and Vail Ski Resorts at the Eagle Vale Firehouse. Oh. Until our next adventure, peace.